morning, good evening, good afternoon. Um, this week we're going to be covering net flow and flexible net flow. The diagram in front of us, we have a simple network on the right of 192.168.1/24. All the Windows clients will be getting IPs from DHCP from R1. And then we have the Windows Server at the top left on a 192.168.2.2 of a default gateway dot one to R1. So what we'll do is we'll start with NetFlow, do the configuration, then we'll move on to flexible NetFlow. So NetFlow is primarily used um, when you want more granular aspect of what is in the network traffic itself. So SNMP could tell you how much bandwidth you need in an, an interface, whereas NetFlow could tell you the granular detail of which protocols, which flows. So there's seven key fields that identify a separate flow. The source IP address, destination IP address, source port, destination port, layer 3 protocols, type of service, so quality of service marking in a layer 3 header, and the input logical interface. So we'll start with NetFlow, so on R1. So with a basic NetFlow, all you need to do is do the NetFlow capture, and you also have the NetFlow export on the interface. So if we go interface gig 0 slash 1 IP flow and then you got egress ingress so for this one we'll use egress IP flow ingress we'll do both directions just to confirm we've done the config show IP flow interface so that shows you that on giganet ethernet 0 1 we have an IP flow ingress and IP flow egress so you can see with NetFlow, there is no customizability on the actual definitions of what you would like to monitor on each flow. But obviously that's something where IE flexible NetFlow comes in. So we've done the capture. The other thing we can do is in config T, IP flow export, and then destination. Well, there's new server two, but I haven't got any. Sorry, server one. Well, we don't have any software to actually capture it. So one nine two one six eight two dot two, and most commonly we use. There's no actual defined port number for NetFlow or flexible NetFlow. We tend to use nine 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 five and nine 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 six. If you're sending different flows being recorded in a flow record, we'll, move, we'll go on about this in flexible NetFlow, you need to change the port numbers if they're going to the same server, so the server can define between the two separate flow records. So for this one, we'll use 9995. It's UDP. What I can do now is set up a capture on R1 on the Gig02 interface for that NetFlow traffic that we'll be going to the server and we can double check our configuration by do show IP flow export and you can see that the destination is going to 192.168.2.2 the version 1 flow records so I you have version 5 and version 9 as well but version 9 is the most common one to use now we can just change that as well show so IP flow export version. You can see there you've got one, five, and nine. So now that we've set up the NetFlow, let's generate some traffic, see it being registered on the router, and hopefully on the packet capture, we could see the NetFlow packets being sent to UDP port 9995 to server one. So you can see here we have all the windows Clients one, two, three. So on Windows One, there's some pings to one nine two one six eight two dot two. On this one, we'll do some HTTP traffic. We'll ping that address. So if we do a show flow IP export so there's 19 flows exported in 6 UDP so we do 
you can see one there actually and you can see there's the traffic coming from r1 going to the server for netflow so what you could obviously have is software like prtg and then this can display the details of all the packets that are being captured on the router itself you can do a show do show ip cache flow and you can see these are the different packet sizes so 10% of them is at a packet of 15,000 bytes and then you can see here's the protocol so you can see some FTP so we tried to do FTP but it's not been set up on the server and then Windows then you can see www and you can see the amount of packets the bytes per packet and then UDP other and you can see there's the IP addresses of where they're coming from and then its destination so that is dot four that'll be switch uh, sorry pc3 trying to go to r1s so that's using icmp this will be the traffic coming from the server going back to pc1 or windows one which will be the replies back to the http tra traffic so netflow itself is very minimal configuration very easy to set up and start recording and then exporting to a server to then be obviously reviewed another useful thing we can set up is ip flow talk talkers i wasn't really going to cover this but we can set this up on the, the r1 and it'll tell us i.e who the top talkers are on this interface so we can sort by i think it's packets or bytes yeah so we do bytes you can then do show ip flow top talkers so the command that I was missing was actually highlighting who how many we're going to mark in the top talkers so the top four so that's what I was missing um we'll just open up that fully so you can see the top talker is currently from server two because obviously he's responding to everybody um, then the next one is dot two, which is the ICMP traffic. So this is hexadecimal. Okay, so we've got one dot three, which I believe is Windows two. So we open up calculator, um, and then we go to programmer x and then we put in so the destination is zero zero five zero which is in decimal is 80 which we know is port http don't know why they didn't hexadecimal this makes life a lot more complicated flexible netflow um, so you can see with the previous section that Netflow was very limited in customization and um, so flexible Netflow became on the scene and um, so this allows us to create a flow record what we would like to collect but also what we would like to define what a separate flow looks like so to start with on R1 we're going to config T and we'll set up the flow record first so all we need to do is go into flow record and then name it so we'll give it the name of reboot hit enter and then we'll give it a description and then we're going to say match so match is what we use to define the separate flows so for example if I said match IPv4 that means that every single different IP address that comes in from gig 00, sorry, gig 01 from any of the Windows clients, if the source IP address chain is different, then that is classed as a separate flow and that will start recording the, the data that comes through that flow and then exports it. So we say IPv4 
and then we're going to say source so as i said match ipv4 source address but you can see you can say mask so if the mask is different the prefix is different back to the previous ones you've got match on ipv6 match on the transport the timestamp interface fields even the application fields we're going to match on ipv4 source address and but we also want to collect the application http and you can see we can even capture the url so you can go to that very granular level but as you can see previously pop3 so mail snmtp so between the servers ssl so https so sip session initiator protocol so that's to do with um, ip telephones so it is very very granular so we're going to say i want to cap capture also the applications http urls and we'll use the destination port source port so that's our flow record so do show um flow record so these are templates you just wait to find ours actually it's just let's just type in reboot and you can see there we'll match an ipv4 source addresses so that's a flow record so what we need to do is create a flow export so it's very similar so all we need to do is flow export so do you notice that netflow has ip flow then the commands whereas with flexible netflow it's just flow export or flow record or flow monitor so we need the name so we're going to call it windows a windows server so always give it a description windows 2k 16 exporter so destination so the destination is going to be 192.168.2.2 and then you've got exporter protocol so netflow version 5 netflow version 9 if you don't hit put in this here what we need i want to do first is we'll do the transport udp and then we'll give it 9995 And I want to just back out and see what it sets it by default. I think it'll be version five. So show flow export. So it sets it as version nine by default on this iOS version. To change that, so say if we could want to change it to version five, because our software can only support version five, we would just go back into the flow exporter and then we would do exporter protocol netflow version 5 and we do a show do show flow export now you can see it's changed to netflow version 5 back to the kind of previous stuff so you can obviously change the dscp marking so for quality of service so if you think that your netflow traffic has high priority you could change the dscp marking to be higher than kind of your normal traffic but really you'd probably set this quite low mtu so obviously the optimal mtu i think you would only you would only consider this if you're going over gre tunnels or any other form of tunnel source obviously we can change the source but by default we've not used the the ip address via the routing table to get to 2.2 so which obviously is interface gig 02 which has got an ip address of 2.1 templates obviously these are the templates by default so there's the default templates that we can use transport we've done in ttl so obviously it's a kind of a more of a security feature so we would set a ttl to one so that it wouldn't go any further so that's us created the exporter that's us created the record so to put this onto an interface we need to combine it into what is called a flow monitor so flow monitor http so all we see here is record and it gives us the names reboot exporter windows 
So that's interesting. So warning, failed to add export. Export or Windows cannot be activated because the following fields are mandatory. So we need to add them in then. So we've done the internal, sorry, the input flexible net flow. So we need to do the output. So interface gig zero slash one. Then we do IP flow monitor HTTP. And then we need to say output. So that's just put it both input and output on gig zero slash one. So all we need to do now is create some traffic. Okay, so now we're generating some traffic via all the Windows clients. We've got some pings, some HTTP traffic from both. And then we go into show flow exporter. We know, we know it's using port 995 and it's going to server. So we've generated the traffic now. Um, you can see there on the flow exporter statistics we've successfully sent six. What I want to do is just find it within Wireshark. So now we've got the show flow export statistics. You can see that we've successfully sent 13 ex exports to the server. And here you can find the actual packet that I've captured. Just to show you it live, we'll just generate some more traffic. There it is there. So 9.995 to the server. So that's NetFlow and Flexible NetFlow. I hope you've enjoyed and there will be a video next week. So leave a like, subscribe, and I hope you've enjoyed. Thank you. Bye.